Welcome back to This Week in Film. It's the weekly podcast where we get together and talk about the movies we've seen over the past week. I'm Nick Pronto, joined as always by Midwest Matt Lauer. Matt, how's it going? It's going awesome. How are you, Nick? I'm good. I'm good. Um, so, what would you see this week, Matt? <laughs> I watched a movie called Cargo, based on your suggestion. <laughs> what did you think? Uh, we'll just dive right in then, huh? Yeah, let's go. Um, Since we've both well, seen it, we're going to spoil the hell out of Cargo. Cargo. Uh, so yeah. if you haven't seen it, uh, I'd recommend seeing it. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> <Really>? <laughs> um, well, I'll say this much. If, if uh, we're going to be spoiling things, one of, the, one of the issues I have with this movie is that there's so many plot events. I'm not sure. They're not twists, but it's like every three seconds there's something dramatic happening. Yeah. So, uh, so we're going to spoil about 200% more things than usually we could in a movie. Okay, yeah, yeah. Uh, um, yeah. And this is going to be a spoiler-heavy episode because um, uh, the, I watched two movies. Uh, I, I finally got around to watching Split. Oh, awesome. Uh, and I watched A Quiet Place. Oh wow! Okay, you you had a pretty good week. I sure did. <laughs> Maybe you didn't. I don't know. <laughs> I I, uh, I would expect you you at least enjoyed those movies, even if you don't walk away saying they're good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll get to it. Cool. <laughs> uh, I'm getting some crackling over here. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Good. Okay, cool. Um, so yeah, so cargo. Uh, well, let me say this at at the beginning of this movie, the first four minutes are probably the best part of this movie. Uh, cause it's, it's the one thing I feel like the movie did well. Did you, um, yeah. Did you watch the trailer or anything or did you just jump right in? I didn't watch the trailer. I even asked my girlfriend ahead of time. I said, Hey, why don't you read uh, a description of this and see if you want to watch it with me? Cause I am not going to find out anything. And so she like looked at the description on Netflix and said, okay, I'll watch it. So we watched it, but I, I, I managed to not know anything about it. Although I think about, I don't know, maybe 40 minutes into the movie, I was like, Hey, wait, was the description of this movie? Something like a guy has to carry his baby through survival stuff. And she's like, yeah, something like that. I was like, Oh yeah, I think I did read that at some point. I just didn't realize this was that. Um, but uh, but the first four minutes, I, I'll say this. I'm throwing all my cards out on the table right away, but I think they did everything poorly in this movie, except for the acting, uh-huh. um, with the exception of the first four minutes where and, – and that's – I don't know why I keep saying four, but like the first few minutes. And what was going on pretty well there is what, what wasn't spoiled at all, which is just that you're kind of going, all right, what's – What's going on here? You kind of are are plunged in the middle of something, and you've got to figure out what's going on. But it's it's a little bit of a weird. It's done well, uh, but it's a little bit of a weird contrivance because, generally speaking, I think when that's the sort of thing that's going on in a movie, you've got to do it longer. You know, like if it's going to be something that doesn't spell out for you what's going on, uh-huh. it's usually. I, or I feel like usually they, it, it, taking you a while, it's it's kind of being held back and you've got to go through a fair amount of the movie till you get this kind of satisfying point of, ah, I finally figured it out. This one, there's a little bit of time, but it's kind of like two minutes in, you're like, oh, they're trying to get away from zombies, right? And then you're like, no, nah, it could be something else. And you're like, nope, it's zombies. <laughs> but But if it wasn't, You know, if that wasn't something that the movie was really going for, if it wasn't about surprising you and it's just the nature of it, they're like, hey, we're not going to explain ahead of time. I actually really I can get behind that. Uh After uh, that point, the movie just starts to tank. (laughs) Really? In my opinion. Really? Okay. Well, uh, what is the movie about? Uh, So the movie is about zombies. (laughs) (laughs) Um, But, you know, it's really told through the point of. There's man, his wife, and their baby, and she dies, he gets bitten, and he's trying to get his baby somewhere safe for 
90% of the movie. Um, and along the way, boy, does he meet a lot of people and a lot of things happen. <laughs> Too many. Um, so how much time <clears throat> the, from when he gets bit to when he's going to turn into a zombie, there's like, there's a, there's a real clock element and I forget how long he's got, but he's got like 72 hours or something. 48, 48 hours. Yeah. And that's one of the things I think this movie does terribly is its use of time. Cause the wife gets bitten and she's a zombie like eight minutes later. Um, now granted there is a period of time in which he's unconscious. We sort of cut out and then we cut back, Uh huh. but it's not the, the what I, I, I turned to my girlfriend at some point. I was like, you know, they could have solved a lot of this by just showing the sun go down and come back up and go down again when the wife was turning into a zombie. Cause we're just sitting here the whole time. Like, dude, he should have been a zombie like eight, uh, you know, eight minutes ago. Then like half hour ago, he should have been a zombie. This movie's just taken forever with him. And the wife like has what I would call like a zombie fit or a zombie freak out like once. Uh huh. And then she's a zombie. He goes through like three or four of them. Where he like has a seizure and then spits out blood and then gets goop coming out of his eyes and then uh, uh, passes out again and he just she she kind of steady turned into a zombie. He uh, every time he takes a nap or or you know falls out of consciousness after having a freak out, he wakes up fine. Uh-huh. He's like, oh, I'm a zombie. No, wait, I'm cool again. And I'm like, hey man, if you're gonna have a movie. In which you, as an audience member, are figuring out the rules. I feel like the rules should be consistent. Okay. And and the way it's portrayed, it's just so off the mark between how it happens with the wife and then how it happens with him. So anyway, that's that's one of my pretty big complaints there. Uh, I really wanted to like this movie, Partly because you recommended it, and, and I was, you know, going into it blind, so I was just kind of looking for a good experience. But, but also, like, with it being a Netflix movie, you know, which to my understanding doesn't really mean much. I, I just assume Netflix just buys independent movies more or less. Yeah, um, and maybe I'm wrong on that. But when something's not a big budget, basically, when it's not a fucking Marvel movie um, or something trying to be a Marvel movie, I mean, obviously DC, um, but. <laughs> You know, if it's not one of those things, then I want it to 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 be good and flourish because I like there being variety, and I like that you know that Netflix is putting a lot out there. So, so I really want things to be good, but I just, I, I mean, this is one movie where I guess I'm going into another complaint here, but like, I don't usually notice directing very much. Like, I know you do. Um, but I don't have sort of the trained eye for directing, so I don't really notice it a whole lot. I, I definitely focus more on story above all else. Uh-huh. Um, but it, but man, there was there were a handful of times where I'm like, this was just terribly directed. There's a moment, one of these drama moments, where this redneck guy tries to shoot Martin Freeman. By the way, the main character is played by Martin Freeman. Um, and he, quote unquote, accidentally shoots his own girlfriend. Well, actually, it's more like his, like, rape girlfriend. Like, some, <laughs> yeah, some girl like he's kidnapped. Rape slave. Yeah. And, uh, and he shoots her. And, like, I paused the movie and I turned to my girlfriend. I'm like, what the hell was that? Like, we're talking. And she's not big on, like, dissecting movies. But, but she was like, yeah, the angle was completely wrong there. Like, he would have shot right over her head at him. She wasn't even in the way. And I'm talking about also, like, how Martin Freeman's running away, and he's like, well, I'm going to shoot you. And then instead of it being like, while he's pulling the trigger, the white, or the, you know, slave girl jumps in the way, it's so slow. She, like, steps out, and she's like, no, don't shoot. And he pulls the trigger, and there's there's just all this time for it to register for him that like, Oh, my girlfriend's quote unquote in the way. But what we should have seen if it was going to take that long is him going, I'm going to shoot her instead. And then moving the gun down <laughs> like 40 degrees. Um, and, and, and then even once she does get shot, it's all in slow motion. And it's weird. Cause she's got blood already. Like that's dripped down to her waist, but it's obviously super slow motion because she's standing there forever. Uh-huh. 
Or if you go all the way back to our episode on the dead room, how the girl faints poorly. Um, <clears throat> this <laughs> this woman just dies poorly because she stands there with a bullet hole in her chest for like 10 seconds. And I, I mean, I had time to turn my girlfriend there and say, like, this is taking forever. Man, you know what? I really do not remember this at all. <laughs> no? Not not at all. <laughs> well, I, I'm, I'm kind of surprised. I mean, maybe... Maybe it just immersed you enough to 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 give it a, a bit of a pass there, but that's what I felt like. I felt like there were a lot of moments in the movie where it was like it was asking for too many passes. Like there are a few things here and there. I'm like, okay, all right, cool. I can I can go with that's unrealistic or that's coincidental. Uh huh. But this movie has them all over the place. I mean, you get the impression at the beginning of the movie that uh, that they haven't seen people in a long time. Because he sees some people on the bank while they're riding on the boat down the river. Right. And he's like, holy cow, people. Hey, wife, get out here. And then they pull a gun out, and he's like, never mind. Right, yeah. But, uh, but boy, he, he's got 48 hours to live, and he meets everybody. <laughs> <laughs> he, meets, he meets a little girl who's trying to save zombies. He meets um, a guy who's trapped under some beams and happens to shoot zombies for him. He meets... A, a white woman who might have had cancer recently because she's bald and yeah, she gives him advice sense. and yeah and it's just everywhere he goes he meets somebody helpful i'm like what's going on here if he had just you know listened to his wife at the beginning because she's the smartest person in the whole movie and let her kill herself and then just he wouldn't have gotten the bitten himself why did and the wife could've... why did the wife go over to the boat you know what? I think what happened there is he had told her it was safe. He was trying to convince her that he hadn't done anything stupid uh -huh. by going over there. And then she saw that he had um, gotten her a bottle of wine and written a cute note on it about how much he loved her. Right. So then I think she was going back over to the boat because he had been I think he had been asking her to go back. Like, hey, let's go get more stuff from the boat. And she's like, are you sure it's safe? I don't know. And he kept saying, yeah, no, it's safe. Trust me. Trust me. There's no zombie in there. <laughs> and then she, I think, decided to try to go get him a gift. Um, or to, like, kind of to pay him back for his kindness. Because they had recently had an argument. Uh -huh. Although you don't see them make up at all. They just suddenly love each other perfectly. Um, and it's it's kind of like... You know, oh, they're, they're so great together. Um, so I think she sees that and goes, all right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and get some stuff, and I'm going to see if I can find something for him. And, uh, that's, that's the best answer I have. Uh -huh. And so, and then she gets bitten, and uh, yeah, I will say, you know, like one thing that I can sort of appreciate is that they didn't have her, like, yelling at him after that. You know, because I don't think if it is a loving relationship, I don't think you would. You know, like I don't like I don't think you would go back and be like, "You jerk, you lied to me, <laughs> and now I'm I got eaten by a zombie because of you" or anything. It, it would just be like, "Dang, this is sad and this sucks." Yeah. Um. But uh. Yeah. So so that's how she. Yeah. That's that's why I think why she ends up going over there and getting bitten and then throughout the rest of the movie i mean now granted it's a survival situation and he's worried about his daughter but like the only moment you see him grieve his wife at all is when he stabs her in the head and then falls down next to the truck crying for 8.3 seconds yeah and then after that he's like every time he meets somebody he's like cool do you want my daughter right <laughs> do you want my daughter and then the the white lady that who i'll, I'll just assume has cancer um, she says, hey, take your daughter to these people in th these kids that have, have kind of gone back to old ways and can survive. Yeah, the Aborigine people. Yeah. And he's and he's like, no, <laughs> I, I, I'd, I'd rather I'd rather uh, see if I can run across some uh, 
uh, either give it to these white people that I ran across or maybe find those other white people who pulled a gun on me. I'm not giving my baby to those black kids. <laughs> and I'm like, dude, what is your deal? So I'm sorry. I've, 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 I have a lot to say about this movie. No, well, please. Well, how, how did it sit with you, though? Let's let's give you a chance to, to throw something else in the ring here before people just listen to me and blow it off. Uh, see, I liked the movie a lot. I, I, I enjoyed it. I thought it was a fun, fun little ride. Um, I agree with you about uh, uh, most of the stuff you said. But um, <clears throat> for the most part, like, I like... I like the, I like, this is another, like I was talking about it with the uh, Ant-Man and the Wasp, but like, this is another movie where it's ticking clock, the movie where mm-hmm. he's got, <clears throat> excuse me, he's just 48 hours to, uh, to find someone to take care of his daughter. And, and, uh, and he also has to figure out what to do with himself. Cause, uh, um, I mean, what would you, what would, it seemed like one of those, like, what would you do if you were in this situation? Like you had 48 hours before you're going to turn into a monster and your daughter needs to get taken care of. And it, it's basically a, a road movie. But I feel like it's got good answers to that. Like, Hey, give it to the woman who just is, knows how to run a school and has medical supplies. And yeah, but is she going to die in the fine. next couple of weeks from cancer? Like who's, who's she going to get to watch the baby too? Well, then I'd follow her suggestion of take it to these kids who know their stuff. Yeah. Mm. Anyway, sorry. Keep going. I told you to talk and then I'm interrupting you. No, please. <laughs> please. It's It's been a couple of weeks since I've seen the movie now, so I was, I'm kind of like reliving it through your description. Oh, okay. <clears throat> but, well, uh, yeah, that that is one of the problems I had with it then, was that it's like it poses a question, but it gives you lots of answers that are better than every answer he chooses. He makes the dumbest decisions. Yeah. Um. Uh, the one thing I really didn't like was the the action sequence with the with the crazy rednecky guy, uh, mm-hmm. the guy who like is raping the one woman. Um, uh, at the end, towards the end, where they have the uh, the the shootout in the tunnel, like that yeah. was that was really like they were like, well, we got to wrap up this storyline um, with this guy rather than him just getting away. Um, yeah, uh, it, it, they didn't need to wrap that up at all. I mean, right. things that happen throughout the movie happen very randomly and very coincidentally, and I, I didn't expect to see the guy again. Yeah. And it's, they're like, uh, we better bring him back so they can shoot each other. I don't even know who got shot there. I guess Martin Freeman did. but Did he get shot? I think the guy got shot. <sighs> they might both have gotten shot. I mean, like, this guy is the worst at everything he does. The main character is bad at everything. He's bad at letting his wife make a decision. He's bad at driving. He's bad at choosing babysitters. He's bad (laughs) at trying to trick or shoot this redneck. He's bad at using any weapon, which he usually doesn't even collect. And he's bad at becoming a zombie. (laughs) Anyway. Um. I did. I did really like the way they did the zombie stuff. How it was like like an infection that uh that kind of just like covers the body, like the the gross goo that comes out of the eyes, and yeah. and then how he's like trying to eat the blood off the wall and stuff. Where where he's like slowly turning into the zombie. It's not just like it wasn't just one of those things where he just dies and wakes up the zombie. Uh, yeah. It's like a slow de- degra- degradation. Mm-hmm. And uh, I, I did enjoy the way that they did that, and and like you said, I thought that the acting was really good. I I love Martin Freeman in almost every, almost everything that he's in, and uh, this was no exception. Uh, well, and I'll agree with you too on the 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 physical aspects and the transformation aspects of becoming a zombie. Although it's a little weird. At one point, he's like, "I'm going to wipe the goop off my face," and that's why I say he's bad at becoming a zombie because he's like. N- not doing it <laughs> like it's because yeah. like, he keeps waking up fine after turning into a zombie or like w- scraping the group off his eyes and being like cool i'm me again for a little while I, but but from the basics of like seeing how someone transforms i'm with you 100 percent on it's it's better to see it as a gradual transition than just an instantaneous kind of thing yeah there's actually a movie that's all about that um I, and I think I know for sure it was available on Netflix. It might even be a Netflix movie. And I'm going to ruin this here because I'm not quite sure. Like, I thought it was called Contagion, 
but then you you suggested I watch a movie called Contagion. Oh yeah, that that's is that's the Steven Soderbergh movie about the disease. Okay, that movie's so, excellent. Yeah, so and I still haven't seen that one. I tried looking it up, but it wasn't on a streaming service. I have, um, but uh, it maybe it's called Contagious. I'm gonna go ahead and look it up and see if I can uh, uh, suggest it to you. All right. Oh no, it's here. It is. It's called Contracted. Contracted. Okay. Yeah, and uh, if if you if you like that aspect of this story, I would say watch that movie. It's it's pretty well done. And it really gives that the aspect of transformation a lot more depth. Contraction. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so if you, yeah, if you like that aspect of this, I'd say definitely check that one out. All right, that's cool. Um, nice swallow. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> that was supposed to be more of a. Non audible sip. <laughs> um, so, well, hey, do you remember there being people sticking their heads in the ground? Yeah. What's that about? I think it's because they're, uh, th- the way I explained it to myself was that they were trying to get away from the sun. Like when the sun, ah. when the sun is up, they're trying to like hide, th- hide their eyes or whatever, because when he's in the cave or the tunnel, mm hmm. Um, the zombies are all have their faces mashed against the wall rather than, uh, buried in the sand. Right. And she says they're hibernating. Yeah. Like, I guess they come out at night more so than, uh, during the day. That's Mm -hmm. the only way I was able to explain it to myself. Other than they were like trying to think of a way to make zombies seem creepier. (laughs) It's probably a bit of both, but, but I I can appreciate that you actually have an answer to that because, uh, I couldn't come up with anything. Uh, the the two of us were just kind of going back and forth. I'm like, have you figured out yet why they're putting their heads in the sand? And I'm like, no. If they, at one point, I was like, is are they trying to trap the zombies by putting their head in the dirt? Because I was like, that's why would you waste the time? <laughs> you know, just kill it. Right. So your your explanation makes way way more sense. I also um, I also like that they didn't try to explain everything in the movie anyway. Um, like I appreciate, yeah. I appreciate that. Like, it doesn't really matter, uh, how, how some of this stuff happens. It's just happening and, and you've got to find a way to, uh, to get through the adventure, uh, uh jumping ahead a little bit. That's like one of the things I liked about the, a quiet place is, uh, is, uh, the, they don't tell you like where the monsters come from or anything like that. It's just like the monsters are here. Here are the rules. Deal with it. Yeah, it's it's not over explained. I I agree. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, and and in this movie too, I I I, I appreciate that as well. Uh, I just wasn't able to figure out anything with that part of it. So, and if and if I couldn't, I wouldn't say like that makes anything bad about the movie there. I just couldn't figure out what it was. And right. and I realized at some point that the idea that that's how they were trapping people had nothing to do with it. Cause the zombies were doing it themselves. Right. Um, but I, I like that element too, where you have questions and you're like, huh, that makes it a little bit more, a little bit more alien to you. Um, and, and that added mystery is nice. Yeah. When you're watching a movie that you want to have kind of creep you out. Yeah. And you, you have to creep yourself out a little bit cause you think of a reason why something's happening. Yeah. So, um, was there anything else that you remember you you really enjoyed about it? No, I just really thought it was a, an interesting little take on a zombie movie, um, like a like a zombie movie that turned in, is half zombie movie, half like road horror movie, where um, where like the the main plot of the movie is a guy who's got forty eight hours to get someone to adopt his daughter, or otherwise he's going to eat her. <laughs> Truth. Um, so here, so, uh, okay. So the, the, the plot of this movie kind of wanders and meanders. Um, and you and I've talked about a couple of movies lately that are kind of like that, where they can go in whatever direction. It's not completely linear. Uh huh. But like I said, with this movie, I have a problem with it because everywhere it wanders, there's some sort of dramatic event, you know, it's like someone dies every five seconds kind of thing. Yeah. Um, 
And, and each moment of those is just kind of over-dramatized with music and stuff. But when it comes to, uh, kind of switching gears, uh, uh, when it comes to like the movie asking for you to just accept a bit too much, here's an example of that that I think really, really annoyed me. All right. Um, there's a moment where Martin Freeman's trapped in a cage with this girl who's like kind of like Mowgli. Yeah. Um, and he can't lift the cage door to get himself out. Right. And so he throws uh, like a sheet or something, some sort of like rope-like thing with some intestines or something on the end of it out to the zombies. And the zombies standing there chewing on it lift the cage. And I'm just like, no, this is, this is asking way too much here to, for me to go. He can't lift that door, but the zombies are just eating and pulling on this rope. It's kind of like, I can see that that's not happening. I, I can't. I can't keep giving this movie passes on things like that. So there's just <laughs> one example of stuff that seemed kind of dumb. And like, there's a point not long after that where he and and the Mowgli girl are in this cave, and he's trying to like he's he's obviously set up a bunch of rocks so that he can try to break the chain. Uh huh. And then she's like, "Hey, I have the keys." <laughs> And I'm like, why, why are we to believe that she would watch him do all that and then be like, ha ha ha, I have keys here, rather than just being like, hey, do you want the keys? Mm -hmm. Or him going, hey, I remember giving you a whole bunch of keys a minute ago. Do you mind if I use them to get my chains off? Yeah. So, <clears throat> anyway. Uh, I did like the, the brief storyline of that girl with her dad, who was a zombie, mm -hmm. and she like had him restrained so that he couldn't eat her mm -hmm. i did think that was interesting yeah you, you, it's kind of uh revealed a little bit at a time throughout the movie but sh there's a young lady who whose dad's a zombie and she's kind of left her family to try to protect him sort of dedicated herself to keeping him alive until this man she can get him to this man or get this man to him who she believes to be magical in some way. Uh -huh. um, and, and I do think that plot is revealed fairly well. Uh, nothing also, really comes of it. I, I like that um, what everything she's doing for her father is all for, all for naught because her sister finds the father and kills him. Yeah. Which is, which is sad. And it shows like the, um, desperation of the situation that they're all in i thought that was interesting yeah yeah i mean i don't know that that story might even be a more interesting one than the main plot in some ways i, I do think the main plot like you were saying you know the questions it raises in terms of like what would i do in that situation um this is a decent movie for for that sort of thing it doesn't play out well for the the main character because you go well i would do it differently than him because he's making a lot of dumb decisions right. but just playing with the idea yourself it's it's a, it's a good idea i guess i'll say that the, the idea of this particular zombie story is is not bad um well you know another thing in terms of like i, I said that they're bad at showing how time passes uh-huh it, it seems similarly with with space or like location that it, in some ways it feels like they're trying to take this epic journey in a couple of days. And in other ways, it feels like everything's happening within four blocks of itself. Right. Yeah. You know, like they run into the redneck guy again, everywhere they, they run it. They, they manage to find the people on the river and then they're back to where they started. And then at some point the kids like, like they finally decide at the end of the movie, kind of like a John Grisham thing <laughs> yeah. where the client finally decides to, uh, to uh, to to um, testify, uh -huh. he finally decides. Oh yeah, I should take my daughter to those people. The woman at the beginning of the movie told me to take them to when right. I still had forty eight hours left to work with. Yeah, and then he's like, "So let's do that." And the little girl's like, "They're right there, right?" Like, as if they're right nearby. Well, I and guess then, I mean, if you look at it this way, they're walking everywhere. So I mean, uh, they're not going to get very far walking, but uh, but. But she says she says they're right there, and she points, and she's like, "See, there's fire right right over here on the other side of this bridge." But then they cross the bridge, and then they go through a tunnel, 
And then you see them doing a, a, a Lord of the Rings hike through some sort of like open desert area. Yeah. And I'm like, when she told him they were right there, what was she talking about? Right. <laughs> so anyway, so I think one of the reasons I do find this movie so irritating is that all these problems happen, but there's a, there is a good idea and you do have like these great actors and it's just, I think it had a lot of potential. Um, but it's bad when at the end of the movie, the main character dies and I am laughing and making jokes. <laughs> and when the whole movie could have been avoided, like all the terrible situations could have been avoided if the man had just listened to his wife at the beginning of the movie and gone, yeah, you have the right to kill yourself. You're becoming a zombie and we don't want you to eat our daughter. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's a tough decision. Don't get me wrong. Right. Um, I also like uh, one of the things I liked about it was like that survival pack that they got from the the government. Uh, like with the directions. Yeah, but the, the directions aren't how to save yourself; it's how to kill yourself. Yeah, I thought that was interesting because I didn't understand it at first, and then I went, "Oh, you're supposed to use that needle to to destroy your own brain." Mm-hmm. I was like, "Oh, that's pretty dark." Yeah, it's not like here's something to inject yourself, yeah. so you'll you'll be cured. Yeah, it's not it's not the it's not like, oh, here's our last stim pack. Yeah. And we're using it. It's like, nope, this is your, this your is gun your, with one bullet. Yeah, this is your way out. Well, that was Cargo. <laughs> uh, yeah. I still recommend seeing it. I, I enjoyed it. I, you know, I'm not, I'm, I'm actually not 100% sure I don't recommend seeing it. I would just say go into it ready to. Do you think you would have a mixed bag of making fun of it and enjoying it? Because I, I asked you to watch it without watching the trailer or anything like that. Do you think if you saw a trailer for it, you would have enjoyed it more or uh, less? Um, because you went into it blind. I, th- I think I would have enjoyed it less because I wouldn't have been able to have the the first few minutes of of going like oh I want to figure out what's going on here. Uh-huh. Um, so, so I'm kind of glad for that. Uh, but I, I guess if I were, if, if I were recommending it to someone who didn't listen to the last, uh, 30 minutes of this podcast, right. I would say, Hey, if you like zombie stuff, check out cargo, but be ready to let a lot of bullshit slide. Right. Yeah. All right. Well, that was cargo. Um, moving on. Although I uh, guess I wouldn't wait. Hang on, I wouldn't say the thing about. I said so, because on. I wouldn't spoil that part. Okay. <laughs> oh wait. What? No, go ahead. <laughs> about the the you, you brought up that ticking time clock thing again. Um, the ticking time clock. <laughs> right, the ticking clock. <laughs> yeah. Time clock. Clock time. Clock time. Anyway, yeah. Clock time. Uh, <laughs> your listeners have no no idea what, what that is about. about. Right um, clock time. But yeah, I was thinking about how you had said with Ant Man and the Wasp about the the clock thing, and I kind of was asking like, well, how could there be a ticking clock if what the countdown to is freedom? But it does work. It's just that in in an interesting way, you're not rooting for the person to be able to beat time and to move more quickly. You're actually rooting for time to go faster. Right. And that's that's kind of cool. I don't know. It's just it's just something I gave a little thought to after we got off the phone last time. Um, So I don't know how many movies there are like that where you're like, oh, I want time to go faster so this person can escape or I guess not escape, but like be freed. Escape a fate worse than death. (laughs) Yeah. But anyway, okay. So what's the, what's the next one you want to go to quiet place or what was the other one split? Oh yeah. Uh, Which would you like to talk about quiet place or split? Uh, Quiet Place probably makes a pretty smooth transition since we were just talking about a survival movie. Yeah, that's true. Uh, so I watched Quiet Place, which which we talked about briefly uh, on our previous episode, but we didn't get into spoilers. So once again, spoilers for a Quiet Place. Um, so uh, I love this movie. I thought it was terrific. Um, it's a, it's about um Jim from the Office and his <laughs> wife Emily Blunt. Uh, live in this world where monsters are super good at hearing. And if the monsters hear you, they track you down and kill you. 
and uh that's that's basically the premise of the movie and it's it's done really really well the end (laughs) i enjoyed that one a lot too and i think in comparison or contrast to what we were just talking about this uh quiet place asks for a couple things yeah. Where they're like just just let this slide. Yeah. But 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 not so many that it really like ruins a movie or anything. I, I, when she's having a baby and she's being quiet about it. Uh, yeah, that was a little ridiculous, but mm-hmm. but that, yeah, that's one of the things I really liked about the movie is that um one they don't um I, and we I think we already talked about this, but they don't they don't explain where the monsters come from because it doesn't matter. It's mm-hmm. it says the monsters are here, here are the rules, deal with it. Mm-hmm. And and I love movies like that, like like in Jaws, for instance. They don't explain why there's a great white shark; there just is. Mm-hmm. And uh, and and this movie's in a similar way. Like the it doesn't matter why the alien monsters are there; they just are. And don't make any noise, or they're gonna come and get you. And um, yeah. the. Uh, the movie's done really well. It looks great. Like it's a really well shot movie. Um, and, and they, they set up a bunch of things real subtly. Like we only follow this one family around for the whole movie, but, um, there's like this one sequence where, where they, um, they, the, the, the dad where Jim from the office is on top of this water tower and he lights a little fire. And then off in the distance, you see these other little fires, which show that they're not the only people left alive. Um, and like real subtle things like that, uh, show that they're not completely alone, but they're totally isolated where they are. And, uh, the, the family consists of, uh, the dad, the mom, uh, the one son and the daughter who's deaf, um, which explains why um, the family communicates through sign language. They they all know sign language and talk that way because they can't speak. And yeah, I, and I think that's a pretty pretty good way to to set things up too. You know, where it's like, um, kind of kind of giving some space to like. If you if you don't go, oh, it's so coincidental that she has hearing loss, but you go, oh, wait, no, so she's deaf, so this family would be able to function a little bit better than others. Right. It's better than like, oh, he happens to be a sign language teacher. Right. <laughs> so he's taught his family sign language or something like that. Yeah. Uh, I don't believe there are any kids in the movie that have asthma. No, there's no asthma kids. Thank God. Um, But the movie starts out... um there's like another real subtle thing where the movie starts out um, in a convenience store or like an old pharmacy that's been ransacked and they're looking for medicine for one of their kids. And uh, a real subtle thing is you walk past the, uh, the snack aisle and all the potato chips are still there because you can't eat potato chips because they're noisy. Uh, It's just another real subtle thing that I really liked. I did not even notice that, but that is pretty awesome. Um, And then uh, the movie starts real dark too, because it it starts with um, it starts on like day 89 of this invasion or whatever. And they're, they're at the pharmacy looking for medicine for one of the kids. And then one of the other kids takes this noisy toy and um, on their way back home, the kid turns the toy on and it makes like a loud noises and the kid gets ripped apart by a monster like the, the monster gets the kid it was awesome as i didn't <laughs> like, like that never happens in a movie where like like something happens to the youngest kid i was like oh man that's brutal it was great i could suggest a movie for you to watch but it would be a big spoiler if i were to say so right now so (laughs) yes most of the time in movies that doesn't happen yeah Um, i did not see that coming at all well and for anyone listening who might be a little shy of stuff like that for for the sake of clarity anyway like the kid they don't show the kid being devoured or anything he just kind of gets swiped off screen yeah the Um, monster crashes through the trees and just yanks the kid away yeah, but it is it is an effective scene. I'll, I'll, yeah. I'll totally agree. Um, and it's sort of 
it sort of haunts the family, if I'm remembering right, in a in a in kind of a realistic way. He's not the only thing they talk about, but it is pretty omnipresent. Yeah, you know, like a, what is it? Probably like a year later. Yeah, it's about a year later, and um, they're still dealing with the aftermath of uh, like the one daughter who gave the kid the toy. Um, the deaf daughter who gave the kid the toy after the dad took it away from him. She, she feels nothing but guilty and she thinks everyone hates her because, because of what happened. So she's dealing with that. Um, the parents are like, you're still grieving over the loss of their child. But at the same time, the wife is due to have a baby any day now, which is really irresponsible. I think in the, uh, Oh, that they would get pregnant. Right. Like, I know it's not something that they could, they could do anything about in the post apocalypse, but the idea, you can can plan ahead, you know, there, there are other things you can do than like actual intercourse. I I had that thought too, where I'm like, yo man, if if it was, if I was in the mood, I'd be like, Hey, all right, let's, uh, let's use our hands. You know, (laughs) (laughs) um, we can do this without risking getting pregnant. I mean, the I've been through a few child deliveries now and the idea that <laughs> the idea that anybody could do that silent is insane. Um and and when she does go to have the baby, she does have the baby and, and she like it, she has the baby while the aliens are walking around the house. Yeah. <laughs> which is <laughs> And like they have this whole plan to keep the baby quiet, which is they they created this insulated room and the a special crib with like oxygen to put the baby to sleep. Um, so like whenever the baby starts crying, they're just gonna put him in the the silent tank. And I'm like, that's a good idea. Except babies cry all the time for no reason. <laughs> they cry constantly, and well, and know, it's not they're... not even when they're when they're babies. Like like. I've got a five-year-old and he'll just start crying for no reason. <laughs> he'll just start crying. Well, and if you've got the, uh, you know, you've figured out some technology or how to use your resources in a way to make a, a silent room. Yeah. Maybe make a bigger one and just live in it. Right. Yeah. Why don't they just spend all their time down there? <laughs> yeah. And, and and how about if you have a safe space instead of making it be like two acres away uh, at the top of a water tower? Yeah, and you go like, hey, let's 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 have a safe space that's somewhere kind of closer by. Right. Yeah. But, but I, I guess I, you I know, guess you know they make it they make it over a year without any real incidents. Mm-hmm. Um, and when we join the story, it's it's when everything goes to hell, which is which is kind of a shame because they're they're getting along real well until. Until until we show up and start watching. Uh, <laughs> well, there were other versions of the script that were about those other periods of time. <laughs> they just weren't very effective as a one. movie. It's just the 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 main characters having sex <laughs> unprotected. <laughs> a quiet space, right? A porn parody, <laughs> right? Yeah. Um. <laughs> I'm just coming up with dialogue in my head for that now. Instead of like harder, it's like softer, quieter. But, but she's saying it in sign language. <laughs> um, maybe that's why they're not using their hands. They're busy. Um, <laughs> but uh, but yeah, I mean, like the, it, you you do see. I think enough of. I, I think the the movie deserves a little credit for this. You see enough, in spite of the fact that we are seeing everything going wrong you see enough of their day-to-day stuff like, Oh look, here they are just eating dinner and they eat. I did notice that they were eating relatively quiet foods then, although I didn't notice the chips on the, the, uh, on the shelves in the convenience store. Yeah. And I'll be honest. Uh, I I noticed that because it was pointed. I read a a thing that pointed it out. mm. Uh, I'll bet there are a lot of those things though in the movie that are, are pretty awesome. I I've heard a couple people go like, why didn't they just, build themselves a little tent near the waterfall. And I have to agree with that. Yeah. I, I, Cause yeah, I agree with that too. Like, why don't they spend more time by the giant waterfall? Oh yeah. I, I think by nature you would be, you would want to be around there more often. Once you realize it's quiet, you'd be like, or, or it's uh, all the sound is mad. Like a safe, like, man, I'm going to hang out here all day. A safe spot. Yeah. 
Well, maybe that's where the dad goes. <laughs> He's just like, oh, man, I need time away from the family. Yeah. I'm going to go to my special spot. And he was really doing the kid a big favor by going like, all right, I'll let you in on something. <laughs> There's one place in which we don't have to worry about being torn apart all the time. Right, yeah. <laughs> you're, you're allowed to come out here when I tell you. <laughs> right. This is daddy's spot. <laughs> this is mine. <laughs> this is yeah. my area. Um, and when you come out, you can hang out on the other side. I also thought that the, the moment where um, the dad and the son are walking back from the waterfall and they mm-hmm. come across the crazy guy in the woods who... It looks like he's murdered his wife, but I, but I can't tell if he murdered his wife or the wife was eaten by the aliens. I think she was eaten. I th- I think he he came across her body, just like apparently twenty seconds before that, and it's like, oh no, she died. Yeah, I, I could I could see it being otherwise though. Like maybe he was deciding it was time for them both to give up, and he killed her and was getting ready to kill himself anyway. Uh huh. I don't know why he decided that. Jim and his son needed to go with him. Right, yeah. Why didn't he just, you know, he could have waited another 10 seconds for them to get away. Mm-hmm. Um, but a, a very effective, powerful moment, I think. <clears throat> but, uh, I, you know, I, I, it, it I like the idea because I was questioning that. I, uh, I was kind of going, like, why would he do that? But, but he looked, he looked like a crazy wood guy. So he was, uh, <laughs> so he gets a pass. <laughs> Fair enough. Um but uh but yeah, I I thought Quiet Place was uh totally worth it. Very very uh very entertaining, very suspenseful. Um a couple of jump scares here and there that uh that got me. Um and uh definitely work worth uh checking out. Now I I saw this and I'll agree. Definitely check it out if you can get a chance. Uh-huh. Um, now, I saw this in the theater, and, and I remember thinking while I was watching it, like, I wish I was watching this at home. Yes, I remember because you saying that. Did, how, how did it, like, with you watching it at home, were, were you, like, if you heard something outside or someone, you know, moved around in the house, did you find yourself getting kind of tense about it? Um, nothing. We, well, we watched that at night, and we were lucky that our, the babies all slept through the movie. Um, Mm -hmm. but, um, but yeah, like while I was watching the movie, I did say to my wife, like, uh, I'm glad we're watching this at home because we had it cranked up because it's so quiet. The movie is very, very quiet. Um, so that when loud things do happen, they really resonate with you. Um, but, uh, there was nothing that like, uh, like my, my babies didn't start screaming at a moment that scared the crap out of me or anything like that. But I definitely didn't have that moment where you're watching it and the Avengers are playing in the next room. Now, when you, when you turn to Jill to say, Hey, I'm glad that we're watching this here <laughs> or, uh, Hey, we need to turn up the volume. Did you find yourself whispering to her? No. Oh man. <laughs> Cause that was my, my sense was if I had watched it at home, I would have been more tense because I would have felt like there could have been like, like I felt the movie did atmosphere really, really well. Yes, that's true. And that I was kind of tense. So I was like, man, if I were at home, I feel like if I were to drop something or hear my neighbors move, I'd have at least one irrational moment where I'm like, what the fuck are you doing? Why are you yeah. being so loud? Um, but, uh, well, I, I will I'll, say I'll, that I'll watch it at home and see if uh, I can still have that experience. One thing that I really liked is the moment where she steps on the nail, the the broken yeah. nail that she reveals, because she, they have that scene where she's like yanking on that bag that's stuck on the nail, and the nail head breaks, and and I go, oh well, somebody's going to step on the nail. Who's going to step on the nail? And then about ten seconds later, she just goes back downstairs, and mm-hmm. and steps on the nail. And I go, oh man, that must really, really hurt. Like, <laughs> like I'd be so dead. <laughs> I mean, I would be so dead from those monsters because I stepped on that nail. She like she just puts all her weight right on her. Oh foot. yeah, it's it's not like uh, Daniel Stern in Home Alone putting his foot like one centimeter down on the nail and going like, ouch. Yeah, like she, she's she just full force. And she, like, and she's in labor at the same time. So it's like, oh, man, man, man. Oh, that's got to hurt. It's so bad. 
And then I, I gotta say, like, I, I was thinking though, like, why would you have a nail going up through a a step? Oh, that because she broke the head off of the nail when she, when the bag was stuck to it. Oh, but oh. so it did have it was going downward. Yeah, and it got like hooked on that burlap sack that she had, and she pulled it up, and the head of the nail broke off. Well, I guess that helps because I I was just like, there's no. There's no carpentry reason that you would have a nail right. sticking up out of a out of a stair. Okay, that helps. I'm glad we. I, I did that. realize it was bent, but I thought it was just bent. I thought it was still going in the wrong direction and bent to the side, and then the bag just kind of uh -huh. pulled it upwards. Um, but okay, cool. I did like the way that they. Uh they wrap everything up where like they figure out how to fight the monsters. Um, I was like, okay, I, I can get along with that. Movie's got to end now anyway. So uh, yeah, they, they hate, it makes sense that the monsters would hate high pitch loud noises. Yeah, it does make sense. A little bit of a weird switch in tone though, for the last second and a half of the movie. Right. Oh yeah, totally. Yeah. They definitely were. <laughs> the, the movie definitely is like, we got to end now. We're at, like, we're at 130 minutes. We got to wrap this up. Like I kind of expected Emily Blunt to be like, bring it on bitches. And there to be like a electric guitar, like, Bwah. yeah, like, <laughs> she, she cocks the shotgun and is like, do it again. Cause right, they show that, exactly. they show that brief um, shot on their security cameras of all of those monsters running towards them. And she's like, get ready. Yeah. It's like, and now I'm the Terminator. Right. Yeah. Like she switches into, uh, oh, what's the name of the woman who's in Terminator 2? Linda. Linda Hamilton. Hamilton. Yeah, she turns into Linda Hamilton for one and a half seconds of the movie. Right, yeah. Where the she's, sequel. Where she's, the sequel is that. Where she's cocking the shotgun with one hand. <laughs> yeah. The, the sequel's like Emily Blunt, Monster Hunter. Right, yeah. Okay, so one last thing. Yeah. Um, I mean, you you obviously can add whatever more you want, but I, I got the sense you want to wrap up. But I want to check in with you on something. Sure. How many times, and I am being nitpicky here because I'm still in that mood from the last movie. Um, <laughs> how many times did you did you go, well, wait a minute. That's pretty loud. Like things that they were doing where you're like, wait, the monster would hear them knock over a lantern, but it wouldn't hear this. Like, how did did you did you have a bunch of times where you're like, well, wait, that's kind of loud. Well, not so much, not so much that, but like other things, like like the sound of them playing dice while they're playing Monopoly. They're like they have to use soft dice, and yeah. why are they using fire lanterns all over the place? It seems like they have all the electricity in the world. Uh, that's a good question. Yeah, like I mean, the the dad's got a whole surveillance set up in the basement of the house, and they're upstairs in the living room using fire lanterns, which cause problems. That's a pretty good question. Um, I hadn't really thought about that. And, and where's the I, electricity coming from? I, I was just about to say. Now that you raised the question, I do have to ask, like. There can't be a generator because generators are pretty loud. Yeah. Um, I, I watched a, a review of this movie um, uh -huh. and and the, they they explained it the best. They said the movie's just long enough so that you don't start questioning that stuff till after you've seen it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I guess like that's the, true. The stuff that's – and, that, and that's the sign of a good movie is that you're in and you're out before you can start uh, pulling it apart. Yeah, well, I mean, it's a sign of a movie that knows where its strengths and weaknesses are, at least. Yeah, that's you know, and, true. Yeah, kind of knows it, knows its limits and can go, okay, let's 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 do this right. But uh, yeah, so that was a quiet place, um, yeah. and the show's getting a little long, so we're gonna have to go through Split real quick. But um, yeah, we watched Split also, which uh, I had spoiled for me as part of the Unbreakable series of movies. Oh no! Yeah, I. Th I mean, you did wait forever to get around to it. So yeah, it was bound to happen. But um, I got to say, this movie was great. I I thought it was great. It was tense the whole time. It was. It was uh, like I was on the edge of my seat the entire time watching the movie. Um, Split is uh, directed by, written and directed by M Night Shyamalan, and uh, it uh, it was a good movie, which is 
difficult for me to say for an M. Night Shyamalan movie. <laughs> um, I thought the acting in the movie was outstanding. Um, James McAvoy, it's basically, here's the plot of the movie is James McAvoy has a split personality disorder and he's got like 20, 20 some different personalities. I think it's 23. 23. And, uh, and, um, the star, he's the star of the movie, but the person who's all, like the, the female lead is Anna Taylor joy, who is the little blonde girl from, from the, the witch. witch. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, um, she has a face that was made for close ups. Like she has the oh, yeah. most perfect close up face with like she's got those big eyes and uh just like put the camera in her face and she can look uh, in awe for you. Mm-hmm. Um but uh yeah, so the movie's about James McAvoy kidnaps these three girls and um his twenty three or so personalities are gonna um torture them for, for an hour and a half or for two hours. Um I thought the acting in the movie was outstanding. I thought the movie was great until like the last act. I think it kind of falls apart in the last act of the movie. But um, where he turns into a monster, where he actually turns into a monster, yeah, that that was mm. was dumb. Uh, and then they show that scene where he's like cl- climbing on the wall. I was like, okay, all right. <laughs> now, does it help for you? Does it help when you do see at the end? Although I guess someone spoiled it for you ahead of time, but like. Does it help that at the end you go, okay, this is happening in a universe where Bruce Willis can have superpowers and no. Mr. Glass? Because, no. because um, one, I thought that Bruce Willis was going to show up and save them. Like, I thought that's what was going to happen. Cause I, cause I had heard that it's part of the unbreakable series of, of, of movies. So I was like, oh, so yeah, so so Bruce Willis must be the one who shows up and gets them out of there wearing his security guard costume. And no, like that's just like a post credit scene where where there's an old man sitting in the diner and and they're like, who was it? Mr. Glass. And it's like old man Bruce Willis is like, yep, Mr. Glass. And you're like, oh, that's the reveal. Oh, so it, it doesn't retroactively kind of like undo the no because oh, it seems weird that he's turning into a monster no because in my head i created a much better ending to the movie than what they actually had <laughs> now i didn't know ahead of time that that was the case that it was in that universe but i will also say i had the same response to the end where i was like uh oh, this seems a little weird that he's actually a monster yeah and has this sort of power i mean they said they set it up where like the different like if a, bl- a blind person has a split personality the the split personality can see but the main personality cannot um yeah they 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 kind of set it up that like the different personalities can have different physical attributes yeah but um not that you turn into a monster (laughs) if one if one personality has laser beam eyes then (laughs) the other one doesn't then they still have the laser beam eyes yeah um yeah i don't think uh yeah, I don't think any anywhere there's a dissociative identity disorder where they're like one of the identities can have superpowers. And well, now uh, this is why I'm glad that you're here because you you deal with matters of the mind, uh, Doctor Lauer. That's true. Yeah. Uh, how accurate was this movie in depicting split personality disorder? Um, it plays very loosely with some things that aren't actually necessarily supported. Uh, like if you were to get into the psychology world and, and go like, all right, let's look at dissociative identity disorder, you'd see lots of disagreement anyway uh-huh. um, about whether or not it's real, uh, what it actually is. Um, one thing that's generally accepted is that it's usually connected to some sort of trauma. Um, but and, and actually some of the things that are, are suggested in the movie are – uh, man, I don't want to say they're necessarily real because I don't know, uh-huh. um, but they are kind of in some of the literature, like things like allergy changes and stuff like that. Now, does that mean it's actually proven? No, um, but it's they are pulling from real discussions in the psychology world. What they're doing with it is is not so kosher, but you know, it's a it's a fantasy movie, right? Um, and so, yeah, so it's, it's playing with some, some, some conversations that are actually out there. That, and, and that's about as much as I can kind of confirm there. I've never worked with anyone who has dissociative identity disorder. 
Um, so I can't say I've ever like seen it in person. Uh huh. So that's that's. Sorry, I don't have more for you on that. But that is. Uh, Why did I even bring you on this show? I know I'm useless. Yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, I thought it was it was it was a fun movie. The only real complaint I have for it, besides like the the last ten minutes of the movie, is it is long. Like it really, it, is long. it really feels its length. Um, we had to watch it over two nights because. Um, at one point the babies woke up and my wife was like, I'm going to go to bed. And I was like, I want to go to bed too. So we turned it off and, and it was only like a half hour into it. And we're both like, Oh God, this is a two hour long movie. Yeah. Um, but, uh, but I, I really enjoyed it. Uh, and I was shocked to enjoy an M light Shyamalan movie again. Uh, yeah, I enjoyed it. Um, I would recommend it. And I do think that uh, McAvoy and what's her name again, the girl? Uh, her name is Anna Taylor Joy. Okay. Or Anya, maybe Anya. The two of them, I think, are great. And actually, even though he gets a lot of the credit because his part is pretty, you know, it's diverse because he does these sort of different characters. Yeah. I actually think she does a better job even than he does. And there are a few places where what he's doing. There's some places where it's really awesome. Yeah. And there are a few places where I'm like, this isn't doing it for me. Um, but there's, but overall, I'd give him like a an A minus or B plus in his performance. I'd give her a solid A. Yeah. Everybody else in the movie sucks. I, I can't stand the, the psychiatrist who, or the psychologist, like whoever that actress is. She's fucking terrible. And hearing her talk to M. Night Shyamalan about how his – he eats chicken that's like some sort of sulfate induced hydrogenated bullshit like that mini monologue just oh uh, where where m night shamalam had to insert himself into the movie and they just created a scene yeah well and and usually i just get annoyed seeing his damn face on the screen but in this case like she, she like she sees that he's eating kentucky fried chicken and she goes like oh i see that you're having your monosaturated diagonal, whatever, like, like goes into this big, long description of it. That's just totally Shyamalan dialogue. Like that's one thing this movie almost gets away from is Shyamalan's shitty dialogue. Uh huh. But then there are some moments where it still happens and good God, like that is one of them. Um, and then the two other girls who are kidnapped, uh, Anya Taylor, Jordan Johnson, Anya Taylor, joy. Okay. Anya Taylor joy. She's great. Yeah. The other two girls are terrible. Um, I thought the blonde did okay. Um, and then the other girl was, she was just kind of there for the ride, but like, there's one moment where the one girl says we have to attack him. If the three of us attack him right now, we, 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 you know, we'd overpower him. And I'm like, yeah, you're absolutely right. They should have all done that. Uh, I'll agree with that. I'll agree with the, the they, I don't know. I, I'm hesitant to say they're written fine. I'd need to watch it again. But, but the points they make in terms of like that kind of thing and like that, you know, uh, Anya Taylor Joy's character, they're like, Hey, you know, you kind of do some of this to yourself as far as being an outcast because you're, you, you do some weird stuff, yeah. which I think is explained in the movie. You know, you do get to know why she is a bit of a recluse. Oh, um, you know what? That's the main complaint I have about the movie is the movie did not, the movie did not need the abused molestation storyline to make her out to be a weirdo. I'll agree with that too. It like, didn't need to be. I was, I was like, well, this is unnecessary. But but in terms of the the girls given like talking to her the way they might, I'm like, okay, that seems realistic enough. They're willing to give her a ride home because they're like, all right, yeah, it's, you know. At least they're they're be being jerks. they're being jerks, but they're like at least polite. Yeah, they're kind of a mixed bag. Like, like the dad, are. the dad's like, look, we're not just gonna abandon this girl you invited to your party. Let's give her a ride home. Right. Um. But as far as the performance goes, I mean, I, I suspect that if you watch it again, you'll say, actually, that blonde girl's not good at all. Yeah, I believe that's, you. that's my hunch. I, that's my I believe hunch. you. Yeah. Um, and and the, the, the stuff, the scenes where, um, where, or I guess scene, where it is her talking about, the blonde girl talking about Anya Taylor-Joy's character, 
like when she's talking about things to her dad, it seems a little exposition heavy. And I, when I saw it the first time, I was like, oh no, this is this is going to be the bad Shyamalan uh, dialogue I was expecting. Right. But then for the most of the movie, it's not. Yeah, and then the movie the movie ends with with the monster like getting away. And he lets her live because he sees that her stomach is covered in scars, I guess, because the uncle abused her. Mm-hmm. And he's like, oh, you're not, you're, you're imperfect too. Oh, You've been purified by trauma. Yeah, we're both the same, you and I. See you later. <laughs> I'm going to go back and finish eating your friends. To which I would say, I'm pretty sure those other friends are being purified by some trauma now that you kidnapped them. Right, yeah, exactly. But um, So this episode's getting kind of long, so we're going to have to wrap it up. Um, uh, definitely recommend watching all the movies we saw tonight. Uh, I know you didn't care for Cargo, but I thought it was good. I liked I, it. I, I think most people who are interested in especially after hearing us talk about like you're going like, yeah, I'd be interested in a bit of a different zombie movie. You'll probably enjoy it. I'll still recommend it. Uh, quiet place is a definite recommend and split is a definite recommend. There's a moment in split where James McAvoy goes from being the little kid personality to being the, 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 the personality that is like the total militant guy Mm -hmm. where like the change that happens in his face is, I was like, wow, you can see the exact moment that he changed characters or personalities i was like that is that was really cool to watch happen yeah his the the character you're talking about like the the guy in the jumpsuit and the glasses yeah that character is uh i i think pretty pretty creepy yeah uh, it, it's kind of good at instilling sort of like i i could see having a conversation where you go the three of us should try to overtake this guy and then kind of seeing him look at you and go uh i'm hesitant Let's wait till he turns into the little boy. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, all right. So Matt, anything to, uh, anything to plug this week? Uh, well, you know, you still haven't checked out that perfect circle. Oh, I did. I did listen to it. Oh, oh okay. Yeah. Well, I, I want to hear a bit about that, but I know that the episode's long. Oh. I will recommend this then to, to, to listeners on YouTube. There's a guy, I think his name's Adam. And he does videos called Your Movie Sucks. Uh-huh. Um, I enjoy those a lot. So I'd say check that out if you enjoy those. Your Movie Sucks on YouTube? All right. I'll check those out, too, because I'm looking for something something new. Yeah. Um, uh, I, yeah, I listened to the Perfect Circle album. I thought it was I thought it was pretty good. I need to listen to it again because it's, you know, like the first time you listen to something, it doesn't really resonate. Yeah. Let it, let it, let it simmer with you, except for the last track. The last track never gets good. Okay. <laughs> um, um, but I'm glad you checked it out. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. So uh, that's all I have. Oh, uh, check out uh, check out Matt Vitri's new podcast called <laughs> Movies in the AM. Uh, I think they've got two or three episodes out now. So uh, give that a, give that a listen. And uh, I guess if that's the end of the reel, we'll see you next week in film. Bye. Bye.